Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, for the folks who are sitting in the other panel, I think now you're introduced to me. My name is Joe Kanyua. I work as an enterprise architect at Oracle. And uh, this aspect of service is something I deal with day in, day out, whether talking to government or private organizations, regardless of industry. So we're going to have a good conversation. Thank you, Mike. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thomas Udiambo. I work with the ICT Authority. I had the PMO function. Uh, before that, I've worked in various government agencies spanning about two decades or thereabouts. Uh, so we've had um, immigration department when they were starting, uh, the IPRSs of this world, uh, e-government, and our ICT authority. So we'll have a conversation. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Francis Gituru. I'm the head of enterprise services, uh, business development at Dimension Data. Dimension Data is a services company. So, and before joining Dimension Data, I was in the banking sector um, as ICT head KCB. So, uh, welcome to this conversation. I believe it's going to be wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Angela Nziuki. I'm the country manager of Uhasibu. Uh, we build management software for small and medium-sized businesses uh, in Kenya, and part of our biggest value addition is that we try and integrate with the local stakeholders in the actual market that uh, our solutions exist in. So, for example, we have an accounting system that actually integrates with banks um, and other and Mpesa and other things that are relevant in the market. Uh, we also have a payroll solution that integrates with like uh, KRA and NHIF and SF, just uh, any stakeholder in the market that makes it more relevant to the business. So this conversation is actually pretty close home to my business and to what uh, the industry should be aiming for. Great, so just about opening up for a question. Is there somebody to take the microphones around, please? And as we open them up, I must also say that I've been very impressed. I've met a lot of you know, especially it's interesting that the vendors who are actually not the bigger ones are the ones who are actually transformational in their thinking when they come and they see us. But the biggest problem is a lot of them don't have the appropriate, um, you know, paperwork and legislation in place, so we're actually not able to move forward with them. But as a country, we must and we need to think transformational. We cannot think anything less than that. And I think for a very long time, We've forgotten who we are as a people. So we must take back our place where we belong. And we need to get off our high horses. Rwanda's gone so far, and we keep thinking that we're the top in the region. We are not. We're actually behind. Even Tanzania's beating us. So we need to wake up to the reality and stop thinking that we, we, we're still in our old glory. It is gone. OK. Questions, please? Thank you, sir. My name is uh, Benson Karanja, uh, Public Sector Dimension Data. Um, a comment and a question, if you'll allow. Um, the Ministry of Health, um, close to seven years later, still does not have uh, e a strategy and policy that has been passed in respect to e-health. Um, I was involved in... Um, technical working group <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just trying to paint a picture here um, so uh, um, please please allow me and uh, we then we then realized as, as we were engaging that e-health was being looked at from the medics the health practitioners um, and, and, and 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 that was it uh, and, and 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 the patients um, we asked them then to reconsider because the citizens, healthy citizens, are much, much more than the medics and the patients combined, right? And hence, we had to take um, a citizen-centric um, uh, you know, uh, model yeah? uh, from a strategy and a policy point of view. And that was a tipping point, right? That, that changed uh, everything. Um, and, and to an extent, that will also now influence uh, the kind of systems that they will be looking at to mitigate, uh, um, you know, um, and, and basically fast track the results. What am I getting at? You call the technology partners to come on board 
after you've long finished with the policies and strategies, and you've made up your mind on where you want to go as government. And then you put it on a competitive platform, and the last thing you want is unsolicited consulting around it. It's pretty clear where you want to go. And when that project is finally launched and the results are compromised, you then come back, and, and I'm, I'm being very provocative here, so allow me. You then come back and basically say, technology does not work and the vendors are not even aligned to what government wants to do. I think a paradigm shift is where you basically say, Oracle Consulting, we need you on board when we are putting together the next game plan in health, you know, right? Um, uh, um, and, and, and come and sit at the table, help us understand how we can take this to the next level, long before we start talking about consultancy. I mean, sorry, uh, te 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 uh, um, sorry technology. Um, so that from the very beginning, from a design stage, um, one, the citizen is in mind, but two, the subsequent alignment of technology is happening much earlier. My question to government is, is this model um, uh, uh, possible? Because from, from what we had yesterday at the fires chat, um, uh, IBC wants my fingerprints. I have just turned 18 and they want my, my face records so they can register me as a voter, yet, um, register of persons already has that information, but they will not give it to IBC. So I have to come and queue and be, uh, and, and be uh, uh, you know, um, uh, inconvenienced. And yet, when you then call me to basically build a system, and I tell you, use what um, immigration has, or what registers of person or persons has, and I'll just help you to integrate, you tell me no, because from a policy and strategy perspective, these are two independent entities, and you can't touch their data, they're in silos. So, to a large extent, we as public, you know, uh, players and private sector are kind of at a loss on, on what to do. You guys are already working on silos, you have legal frameworks around that. What do you want us to do? And we have numbers to push. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have a question. I, I Your have name, a, please. I have a comment to Madam. And a question. You see, in the please give your name first. Who my you name are. Yes. is my name is Patrick Masika, from the public sector. Now, there is something which the panel. There is something which the panel seems not to have comprehended. Is that uh, the public sector works according to the one the constitution, which has given duties and responsibilities to every office, and you know how difficult it is to change the constitution. And this, these things now, duplicate duties, like registration, like doing what, we know, we are not very dumb, we know that. But the constitution is very difficult to change. Uh, another, a, a, another issue is that the acts of parliament that are passed must comply with that very constitution. And this brings in the issue of the act of parliament requiring certain officers to do things that some other officers are doing. So when you come in with suggestions, do you consider those and then find out how your suggestions can well work within the constitution? That's my question to Madam. Thank you, and we'll take one more first and we'll come back and do another three, so just a minute, please. Okay. Um, my name is Catherine Koki from the, I'm a systems analyst from the Kenya National Examinations Council. I just want to say that um, it's an observation from your excellent presentation that uh, one of the gaps in uh, whatever we are covering here, we say that we need user involvement in development of systems and designing. But the biggest problem I've realized is that uh, the people who interact with the users are not the people who are supposed to be taking the user requirements, especially the business analysts are supposed to be interacting with the users, but you find that you get users then they are taken to the system developers who do not even understand now their language because everybody has their roles to play in the development of systems. So it's just a contribution and observation. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take those three first. Angela, you want to start? I'll, I'll start with uh, the lady's comment about uh, wrong people 
uh, being sent to actually do um, the usability. Um, I was very specific by, by, by saying usability testing. Uh, usability testing is actually a very specialized um, role in, in any uh, development process. So if you're designing a, a process or a system, especially from a government uh, perspective, my recommendation to the government would be as much as you tender the uh, development work to a specific supplier, as the system owner, it's your responsibility to actually get uh, outsource or consult a usability tester. These are uh, people who spend their lives actually testing and making sure that this system will work with the end user. So that, that would be my recommendation to the government and uh, from a private, um, uh, private sector perspective, we actually do some of these things because we understand that you can't launch a system if you haven't tested. Uh, and we actually test with the end users themselves and the entire team is there. So different people can pick up uh, different things. Um, Patrick, you asked about uh, constitution considerations. Um, I'm not very sure how to respond to that because uh, the recommendations I am making, I don't think even need people to sit in a boardroom for months and months and months to pass a decision. I'm talking about APIs mostly uh, because I come from a, a technology space. Uh, for every system or every solution, every development uh, solution you're designing, there has to be an API, which is something that has been neglected in the past when developing uh, technological solutions uh, from the government. It's, it's not a matter of constitutional change. It really doesn't um, affect anything to do with policy. It's just an API, and an API is for a different system to interact with a different system. It doesn't mean that I have access to any data or anything that uh, is in that particular system. It just means that my system can be able to talk to that system. There's no uh, constitutional rights or anything or for the citizens that be, that's being interfered. It's actually for the, end, for the better end result. Because if my system is much easier for the end user to use, uh, for example, uh, with the ITAC system, it's much easier for them to use. So it makes it easier for the government to actually get their data and get their revenue. So I'm, I'm, either I've not understood your question, but um, I don't think there has much to do with, with cons the constitution. My quick comment on the, uh, the again, the lady and the gentleman was, the yeah, I totally agree with you. You need business analysts. You need people who sit between technology and uh, the end user if you're going to translate those requirements to specifications for the system. And again, going back to the outsourcing model, you don't have to have all that within yourself. If you know that is the need, then you can partner with somebody who is able to do that for you to make sure that the solution is 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 going to work properly and then before even you come to designing and even testing it so the very first concept should be there should be somebody who is able to interpret the user requirements properly into technology solutions so that's very important uh, j just all right just then i'll give you then the other one about the constitutional issues um that's why we we are happy in this country to see uh ICTA to see the Ministry of ICT and all this, even at the county level, we have these things being highlighted. Why? Because we need the leadership and if something then needs to be changed, we, need, we, 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 we facilitate and lobby for that to be changed through the proper systems. And even more important, I think I had somebody mention yesterday, the citizen's right to information and to service is actually also built into the into the constitution. So let's not use this one again. Is this one? But then we need to to know the constitution has also equipped us and said we must have the relevant information and that the the, the end user, the citizen, is entitled to information and to service from the from the government. So are we are we using that or are we just defaulting? to the comfort level of saying, no, this is what the Constitution says we can do it. What about this other empowerment? So just my thoughts on that. I'll quickly uh, comment on uh, the one frustrated Benson Karanja who's waited for seven years for the e-health uh, strategy, um, uh, and it's still uh, yet to come. I think uh, I would also just say I think probably there's opportunity now. Uh, I'll use the word the Constitution again. Uh, Right now, even our CS is, is from the industry, it's from you. 
So I think that is likely to change dramatically. Uh, that one we didn't have before. We had career civil servants and some politicians as, as ministers. And, and therefore, Karanja, the Karanjas of this world would find it hard to find a seat on the table of where that happens. And therefore, the interaction, even the task forces, committees within government, where all this is done, uh, the space for the private sector was uh, diminished. I think that space is now opening up, and there are more seats. I wouldn't be surprised if Karanja tomorrow is the Minister for Health, CS for Health. Okay, great. Uh, just some um, extending thoughts on uh, Catherine's question, which Francis touched on. And uh, personally, I've worked as a business analyst for more than four years in an organization. And to date, with all the interaction with government, I've never had someone who introduced themselves to me. I am a government business analyst. I always meet developers. So the question is, why are you developing? Because you really, if we are talking about designing services with the user in mind, we always need someone who will be able to translate those user expectations stated as a wish list or as an aspiration or as an intuition, and then be able to take them in such a way that a technical solution can meet them. So that bridge is always a missing link, and this speaks to uh, what we say about capacity development. In all organizations I've worked, uh, fortunately I've only uh, worked in private organizations, you will see the way they staff even the ICT department is such that they have identified we need a business analyst, we need a solutions architect, because today we are not talking about service implementation, we are talking about service design. Typically, design is usually conducted by architects. Why? Why is it the case? Just like this house, there was an architect who was involved before the fundies came to put these blocks on. But if everyone just jumps to put the blocks before you even know how the master print will be, we should not be surprised that the services that we are serving out there are actually lacking. And uh, we as the vendors, uh, we are always taken aback and then we say, look at a company like Oracle. We have a public sector center of excellence. Globally, it has global best practices. We work with the Kenyan government, we work with the US government, we work with the, the UK government. For example, the UK government runs majority of its services on an Oracle G cloud, a government cloud that has been developed by Oracle. So, and this is free services, free consulting. So we want the government collaborative effort. We talk more, you will get to learn from best practices from our experts who have actually worked in the government before and now are working at Oracle. So whether you are in the justice value chain, you will find someone you can talk to. Whether you are in the revenue authorities, you will find someone who has ever done a potentially a similar thing that you have done. Thank you. Yes, uh, you asked about the filing your returns. I hear you, and that, that's actually one of the biggest problems that, um, that most of the people are facing. So what we've done as, a, as, as our company is we took the time to actually understand how this uh, Excel sheets uh, work, and then we built interfaces. So we've built a payroll system that can be able to, just with a click of a button, you can click uh, one, two, three, and you're able to actually file your uh, payye returns through ITEX, your withholding tax uh, through ITEX, and then uh, come towards the end of June, uh, we're going to actually launch uh, another system called Tax Angel that the individuals can use to do their personal uh, returns. Because last year, um, we also ran a blog called kenyamanual.co.ke, and on that blog, we share our experiences when it comes to interacting with different government bodies. For example, uh, if I go and sit and figure out how to do my tax returns on iTax, then I share that uh, post on the blog. So one of the uh, experiences we had last year is that at, in, towards the end of June, we had about a thousand comments from people just asking, how do I file my tax returns? How do I do my personal returns? So we decided this year, come this year, we're actually going to uh, provide a solutions to the end user. It's probably going to be free of charge that you can use to, um, it's gonna have a very s simple questionnaire on your mobile phone. You can uh, just answer it very briefly and then the system can be able to do uh, the tax returns for you. So you won't need to be able to download the Excel sheet and then figure out how to use it and then now do it. So in terms of the uh, bigger picture and the broader perspective of this conversation, this is where the collaboration comes in. If you ask me, I actually think uh, the systems that the government have, like iTax works perfectly fine, but then I'm the minority. So what what happens, what do we do as the private sector and as the government to make it easier for the end uh, consumer? So that's what we've done as a private sector. We've uh, built a system that can be able to help you as an end user or 
um, anybody else from the rural areas who won't uh, possibly have, have the technology or the expertise to be able to do these things uh, themselves. You can, you can talk to me afterwards. I'll give you my contacts and then we can talk later. Uh, I wanted to um, comment on the uh, on the issue of uh, uh, filling taxes uh, is a nightmare, I think, for the gentleman from uh, uh, Makweni. And uh, to some, I think for for this because it's been there, and uh, I'm glad because I, sometimes, and that's how life is. Uh, we've seen how Safaricom was complaining about the peculiar calling habits of Kenyans. But right now, they're not complaining. I think they just used that to make all the money they're making uh, currently. They just changed it. They just flipped it. And now they're laughing all the way to the bank. I think then, uh, you know, the Ushahidis should take uh, the advantages of the, uh, you know, the filing systems that you can do and then offer solutions that could probably help. Just a short one on the short procedure you get or short time to adequately respond to uh, RFPs from uh, government and so on. I think two things. One, there's a new procurement act, uh, uh, operational January 2016, uh, provides for framework contracting. So, and ICTA is now getting, to just get into a contract with Safaricom so that any other additional you know, link that is required, they don't have to go through a new process. It's just added onto a, an existing arrangement, you know, for the entire government. So that should make it easy for and, you know, uh, lessen the burden of you having to respond each and everywhere. Uh, and hopefully the government will get the economies of scale and enable the providers to actually do a, a better job. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ask each panelist just to give their final comments as we round up. And I will start this time with Angela on this side, because I started with. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, actually, for making it the, the time to come and listen to us. Um, my final uh, take or comment would be, uh, I can't stop insisting on that, APIs <laughs> from the government. Uh, we need uh, for our, because so, that's the only way we're going to achieve the partnerships of the collaboration, especially from the private uh, sector, the technology companies from the private sector. The only way we're going to be able to integrate with the government systems and be able to do uh, things like um, what the gentleman from Akweni is facing is if the government solutions had APIs, because if they, if they were open, it would take me about a month for me to be able to uh, make the systems work. But without the APIs, I have to actually figure it out, and it takes me about six months to a year to actually do, to solve a problem that would have taken me much shorter. So for the uh, uh, bigger picture and for, for the collective good, it, make, it makes much more sense uh, when the government makes it easier for the private sector to plug into their systems and their services. Uh, my final comments is yes, uh, two comments really. The end user is the person we are building these services for, let's involve them. And if you have challenges, please involve uh, the, the, the brand names you see here, involve Dimension Data, bring in Cisco. These companies have huge investment. And somebody said government is a major consumer. They should be willing to commit resources to help you scope the end user requirements so that when you design services, they are working. Uh, my second comment, let's use the constitution to our advantage. Let's transform this country. Let's not get reasons why we cannot transform. Let's get excited on the other side. I know there are issues to be ironed out, but I, I know that the same constitution does guarantee service delivery, requires service delivery, requires uh, information access. So there are provisions that are for these transformation processes. Let's leverage those even as we tackle the problems of the other provisions that seem to hinder us and let's transform this nation. Uh, my final comment is just to say there's innovation in this country and it's not uh, by mistake that we even have a ministry in charge of innovation right now. And the thing is for me is just to collab collaborate more. Uh, we have to take the two sides of the equation, the demand side and the supply side. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Uh, and thanks, Chair. Thanks, everyone, for sitting through. So my parting shot uh, as well is just to emphasize that I think the synergy is in finding for all these players in the ecosystem, the manufacturers, the government, civil servants, the citizens, how can we collaborate more and find uh, more amicable uh, solutions? But uh, there a, was a panel uh, separate that was talking about government as an enabler, and I would want to see how these two designing other service and government as an enabler, they should actually be gelled together because they're actually speaking. What we are talking about enabling is actually enabling these services that we are talking about here. And to me, the services that you'll be able to offer and consistently will be built on how uh, robust, how solid the foundation for that service is. And that's why Angela's APIs come in because part of the foundation, we should have like a service-oriented architecture platform whereby it's easy to plug without changing a lot of what's happening. Uh, at the same time, we need also to uh, measure our service fulfillment. It's one thing to offer services, but like uh, the gentleman from Akweni with issues, we need to measure how effective these services really are because you cannot improve uh, what you cannot measure. And as we know, the plan, do, check, act. We need to consistently be doing that as part of government. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause first. So in conclusion, I want to thank you all for being a part of this session. But in closing, I also want to tell you all that as both as consumers and as vendors and as innovators, you have 48 different governments. So you cannot give any excuse for why it is that you're not playing your role in terms of changing this country. And my final word to each and every single one of you is, what are you doing individually to make this country take its place where it rightfully must be on this continent, which is on top. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Mm -hmm.